Hi guys, it's Emma. If you have been keeping up with the Maya Millette case, then you will know that recently Larry Millette had all of his guns taken away from him. I have received a lot of information regarding this case and there is the California Department of Justice Bureau of Firearms report for the prohibited person. This shows you the firearms that he had, which were the handgun, rifle and shotguns, the categories, the serial numbers, make, model, caliber, firearm origin, color and barrel length. There are also the make, manufacturer, condition, caliber and quality. There was also, because of this, um, Larry wants his guns back. And because he is prohibited, which is here, the report for firearm ammunition storage for the prohibited person, they actually put a restraining order against him owning any guns for the current time. So this is what they gave him. Now, this is the California Department of Justice um, form that he sent in in request in order to try and get his firearms back. So this is the statement that he gave them. I, Larry Millet, declare as follows. I am the respondent in the above referenced matter. I have personal knowledge of the facts that is forth in this declaration and if called as a witness could and fully testify completely to such facts under oath. It is my desire to have peace, safety, stability, health, prosperity, love and countless blessings for my wife and my children, my family, friends, neighbours, co-workers, my community and others around me. It is also the desire of my heart to protect and defend my children, my wife, my parents, myself, my home from the dangerous and toxic environment and people. Unfortunately, I have been prevented from enjoying these blessings as such as a result of my wife leaving our home and not returning. To complicate matters, my wife's family and their attorney have been appealing on television, uttering statements implying the highly suggesting to the public and the media that I am to be blamed for the sixth month disappearance. I am not responsible for her disappearance and I fully cooperated with the police investigation. The Chula Vista Police Department spokesperson said that there was no indication of foul play. I am not suspect, according to the police authorities. But nevertheless, the Chula Vista Police have searched my home twice, first in January on the 23rd, 2021, and the second time on May the 7th, 2021, and removed many things, including my car and all my guns that they took from the safe, deposit metal container and other things, Exhibit 3. I am not in possession of any guns at this present time, but I am afraid for my safety and the safety of my family and my home, because I have been receiving threatening, angry, insulting, accusatory, malicious and hateful messages from people. The only words to come out of their mouths are negative and derogatory statements towards me. These people have even been implying that my parents, who are retired, have done something and I want to protect them. Their language revealed the venom from their hearts. My neighbour even mentioned about mysterious bang sounds recorded behind our residence on the night my wife was last seen. An attorney working for my wife's family have even come to my house in order to gain entry and access to our house. The attorney pretended that he was from the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. He appeared several times on television and made statements suggesting that I am responsible for my wife's absence. My, my wife's sister and family have also made negative statements against me. This created an environment of hate and anger against me and motivated people to leave threatening and malicious messages on our doorsteps, front door, text messages and through the mail. I have received recorded statements from a man who states that he will get me and that I could not hide, that he is not playing with me and states that he knows where I am about my social security number, my bank account. Furthermore, he states that he is watching me and he will get me even after court. My wife approved of my gun collection and we thoroughly protected and defended our family from harm. Now my family and I live in a painful, hostile, harassing environment. I am saddened and afraid of all these events, but when will it stop? How do I protect myself? How do I protect my family? Do I have the right to defend myself and the lives of my loved ones every day if I feel unsafe? 
I have served the US Navy for more for so many years and remember the strict gun safety drills that we learned. I value the right to own a gun and believe it should come with safety measures like background checks and secure storage. I have done both requirements and I make sure my children and others are safe. In fact, I have carried a gun safety card, Exhibit 13, 14, 15 and 16. The testimonies and narration of the police does not provide the truth and does not help in locating my wife, nor does it resolve life's problems. I want the court to know that I have not met nor have my past or present communications with the SDPD Detective Harlow, whose declaration has been filed with the court. I was not given or served with the attachments 1 and 2 stated in his declaration under penalty or prejudice and Thrust cannot completely respond to his allegations, and I ask to be given more time to respond when these documents were served to me. May this serve as my response to the City of San Diego Police. I have not resided nor worked in the City of San Diego. My children, my parents, my wife, and have been, res have been residents at Chula Vista for over 10 years, and I've worked and currently work for the United States of America inside the US Naval Hospital compound at Balboa Medical Center. I am not violent or dangerous person, and I have not hurt nor harmed anyone, Exhibit 17. I am a law-abiding citizen who gets up in the morning, cooks breakfast for my three children, aged 4, 9 and 11. I take them to school, pick them up in the afternoon after school. I cook and feed them, clean the house and work and take care of my children. I also take care of my parents who are also sick. My father was sick and hospitalised in January 21, just about the same time my wife left our home. My wife's whereabouts still remain a mystery. Yes, I collect guns as a hobby and interest with my Uncle Ricky Lincoln, Uncle Rick, who also collects these guns. My guns are registered and I have gone through the required background checks. I have 17 guns that are all San Diego taken by the Chula Vista Police Department. I have no guns inside my house and we are not allowed to bring guns at work. My Uncle Rick had five AR-15 they are, incom they are incomplete and dismantled guns that nobody can use. Uncle Ricky had mine stripped down lowers, and I had the uppers. But these were also taken by the Chula Vista police during a search of his home on April the 1st, 2021. According to Uncle Rick, the Chula Vista officers did not provide him with any listings of things that they removed from his house during the search, and he believes the police took all the guns, including five of his father's guns, that were taken given to him when his father passed away in 2002, including other items. There is no significant danger to me having access to firearms. It is merely the opinion of the Detective Harlow, who I have never met. My firearms are not assault weapons and were not considered assault weapons when I legally purchased through the authorised FFL. All my gun purchases have gone through the California 10-day waiting period and DROS daily record, record of sale process. All of my firearms are serialised. I store long rifles dismantled, keeping one or two fully built for our family to def for defence purposes. I did not allow a third party to possess my firearms without legal referral. My uncle Rick had five incomplete AR rifles that only consisted of the stripped lower trigger assembly and buffer tube. These are not able to be fired and have been fired once since being put together. And then he, reg then he mentions the following unregistered uh, assault weapons, the aero position model and the high point firearms. And then he states, only the JD machine model TR-1 that was illegally seized by the Chula Vista is mine. During the search of my home, I was never shown or given a copy of the so-called search warrant and still not being given a copy of the list of items of my personal property that they took away that day. At the time, I was instructed by the police officers to open my locked garage gun safe deposit container where the firearms was located during the beginning of the search. Without a camera, they finally searched the property and the container. After several hours have passed, making it look like the safety deposit container was already opened during the search. The long rifle in question was purchased legally and is in was legal when I built it years ago. After many years of compounded California bans on certain features, my long rifle may be construed as a non-compliance 
to a California penal code. Again, I have never taken my long rifles out of the home to shoot them. These have never been fired. I also keep most of these dismantled in the locked safety deposit container. The aerial precision and high point rifles were seized by my uncle Rick at my uncle Rick's house and are not part of my collections, but the police indicated that belonged to me. Four firearms were taken during the first illegal search of my home to include one serialised and one registered Amorite rifle. Amorite rifle. And then he starts talking about lots of rifles and the serial numbers and how he stores them all. I mean, you can always read through that if you want to, but it goes on forever. Um, I was detained illegally during the second search of my home. Chula Vista police pulled me over on the 5 freeway in San Diego jurisdiction. I understand that only SDPD sheriff or highway patrol are able to pull me over on the highway in San Diego. The Chula Vista police held me for six hours while my home was being searched and they threatened me with being arrested or detained even longer if I insist on going home to my children, my parents and my house. I was allowed by the Chula Vista police to go home close to midnight. The Chula Vista police searched my house on the 7th of May 2021, four months after my wife's disappearance, while I was away from our home. On the same day, the Chula Vista police stopped me on the freeway and told me to exit at the National Avenue from the Instate 5 freeway after I left work from the US Naval Hospital. They refused to allow me to go home to be with my children and parents during the search and told me that they will arrest me if I went home that very moment. They also refused to allow me to speak to my lawyer, so I was detained for six hours and was not allowed to go home until midnight. The police officers searched my house, although he's put peace officers, broke and destroyed bedroom door and walls. So he's basically trying to say that they destroyed that hole in the wall door then maybe, I don't know. Um, and left our house in a chaotic and disturbing state that horrified my children and parents and myself. They seized the JD model machine TR2 I purchased legally through the JD machine and went through the 10 day FFL process. Um, there's some more talk about the guns there. You can read that through if you want. Um, my wife left the family and has not returned. However, however, she would not have allowed me to have this collection if she believed our children or the general public would have been in danger. I will not have this gun collection if my children or community will be endangered. My children are not allowed to open the locked deposit safe metal container. They understand that they are not to handle guns. I believe that I have done everything in my power to keep my family safe. On the rare occasion that I clean the safety deposit metal container and put the unloaded guns for a short period of time on the table and the guns are returned to the safe afterwards. None of the firearms are, are loaded when they are out on the table. Generally, I usually keep the firearms dismantled, leaving one or two assembled for family and home protection. Our children are completely supervised when this occurs by me or my wife or my parents and they have been guarded and given some education about gun safety and they are not allowed to handle any guns. Our children understand that they are not allowed to touch guns. My parents live with us all through the 10 years and keep and take care of our children. They are also present in our house to supervise the children. Our children have never been harmed. There has not been any violence. It is our continuing prayer that my wife will come home. In fact, the Christmas tree that she decorated last Christmas is still standing in our living room. I purchased three guns long ago as a collective items, approximately over 15 years ago, and if need be to protect myself and my family and my home, and believe that it's legal for me to have these. I do not want to disobey any laws. To my knowledge, I have registered all these serialised guns and have complied with the requirements as a gun owner. And if need be, if there are any new requirements, I will follow all new requirements that I am required to comply to. I did not give complete firearms to friends, but only parts to family for cleaning purposes only. None of my ARs have ever been fired. I legally purchased two more pistols to add to my collection through the California process of DROS and through the FFL together with the background check. After the first search warrant, Detective Harlow keeps referring to my firearms as illegal, which they are not, at the time of purchase and configuration. Recently, a California judge 
just overturned the ban, making the two long guns that were seized by the Chula Vista police at my home no longer even are considered illegal assault rifles. The ones featured that are in question are only cosmetic and do not enhance the ability of the firearm. All my long guns are one shot per trigger, pull and are centre fire rifles. These are not machine guns. I have no unregistered firearms. All are serialised and all have gone through the DROS, through the FFL and my background and are always passed. To my knowledge, a possession of high capacity magazines is not illegal. I do not allow a third party to possess illegal firearms without illegal transfer. I no longer have any firearms in my possession. All are in the custody of the LLE of the LE and are stored with a licensed gun dealership. Preventing me from purchasing firearms would violate the Second Amendment, not only to be able to protect my family, myself and my home, but violate one inalienable rights as an American, depriving me with my pursuit of happiness. I am an avid gun collector and the firearms seized at my home twice are considered family heirlooms and are sentimental value. My children do not have access to my firearms. They are trained in regards to gun safety and have not attempted to handle firearms in our home or open the safety deposit metal container. On, a, on February the 3rd, 2021, a referral was received by the Child Welfare Services of San Diego alleging abuse or neglect of our children. A protective service person had been to our home to check on the welfare of our children and they have investigated thoroughly and arrived at a conclusion that my children are safe and well cared for. So this is a picture of the safe. I don't know if you can see it there. That's the safe in, in Larry and Mir's home. This is a text message that Larry had received from somebody threatening him, basically. Where is Maya? the person said. It doesn't show Larry's response. Is this your friend or someone who helped you? What's wrong with you? You don't appear okay. Somebody messaged him, where's your wife? Not looking good for you. That was on February the 4th. Somebody else sent him a message. Why you kill her? Why you kill her, Larry? Somebody else sent him a message. It's time to heal, brother. We need to move forward. We need you to bring Maya home. You have dragged many of your family along already. As I mentioned before, karma always gets you no matter what in life or after life. Do not take away the kids' access to their cousin. And then there's a bit of a blurred out bit. I'm giving you a chance to remember what I said on January the 24th this year. Read back of text whatever that means and then this is somebody else he's obviously put the name in as harasser in his phone hey larry it's time for us to bring maya home do you have anything to do with this we need to bring her home lay her to rest peacefully where did you go on friday why did you leave your phone turned off when you did you did not just go to the beach another message come back hey larry i hope you're doing okay can you call me please my heart is breaking for your family hey larry if you really want to help find your wife reach out to me this has to come to an end if not for your kids for your wife do it for your kids let's bring her home larry her parents deserve a proper burial another message my neighbours gave me the pictures and told me he's been hanging around our neighbourhood. He's been defaming me and posting all kinds of implications all over social media. My neighbours also sent me these. This car parked in front of a, this car parked in front across the street in front of your house. Writing stuff, looking closely to your house, then after ten minutes leaving. Now this was just after Maya had apparently gone missing. Just take a little look at the road. That is all coming from 
Larry's garage. What do you think of that? Moving on. A letter that he got through the post on the 13th of the 2nd. Larry, you coward, tell us where she is. We all know you did this. No Valentines for you this year. A letter that he received through the post. A message that somebody sent him. You have dishonoured your family. If anyone respected you, that is no longer the case. It probably does not even matter to you. The person you are now is the person you have always been. You've never cared nor loved for me. You have not carried out any of the searches, not returning phone calls or texts, not allowing the kids to be with their loved ones. I pray you are not contaminating them like you contaminated yourself. How dare you? What a coward you are to have your four-year-old son, if you could only explain about the 8th of January, unknowingly be an accomplice to your selfish crime. According to your fabricated story, you and he left for Salona Beach. Likely not just another other lie. At 6.30am and returned at 5pm. Where did you really go? Where did you take or leave me? Your phone was off, so you know the steps would not be traced. You'll be surprised that law enforcement can do with technology and surveillances throughout the neighbourhood, city and state. You truly are a coward and not worthy to have the title husband or dad. Who lives their phone these days? This means you are irresponsible, leaving your two girls with no way of contacting you. Not to mention you will be blowing up May's cell phone. Really? Who do you think you're fooling? You are the only lying to yourself. Everyone else sees through your holes. Maybe this is why you don't participate in the searches. You will be asked numerous questions and are unable to keep the lies consistent. Your words are empty and they have no value. What does your mother and father think of you? They cannot possibly believe your lies. I hope they have enough honour and have you to tell the truth. Maybe they are part of the crime you have committed. It would have been better to be divorced. Co-parenting would have been better option. Did you accidentally harm me or did you purposely plan it? Why not send an anonymous note to law enforcement and inform them where May is? Though you are guilty, I am sure this is so-called justice system will allow you to plea bargain. The only best thing you are obtaining a lawyer is to plea bargain. May had no bargain. You saved taxpayers time and money. You are heartless and selfish, having your 11-year-old daughter believe her mum would miss her birthday. I am sure deep in your heart, she knows you are lying. If you truly love them, allow them to enjoy their childhood. Don't rob them and, and deprive them of it. Only God and you know the lies you're telling them. Your reputation as a dad is ruined by you. Only God can truly forgive you. Whose child are you anyway? God's or Satan's? My prayer for you is that nothing you touch prospers or grows. May you have no rest, no honour, no hope or no joy. May your days and nights be filled with misery until you let it be known where May is. No prayer of goodness will be said for you. You are a very weak person. You will remain trapped, have no honour and no respect sent from a caring citizen then there was another letter to him that said well larry it's been two months now without me at this point in time it does not matter what you did what matters is that you tell us where she is why are you putting the kids through this agony why are you putting those you truly love like may through this agony you can't or you won't you're heartless and inhumane less than in less than human being as a husband you were to protect your wife and family you protected neither you couldn't protect anyone how do you look at your children and not have compassion not care about them their hearts are broken they're hurt you took their mum away from them may loved them dearly but you did not nor ever did that you are not allowing them to contact nor visit their aunts uncles cousins grandpa grandma what are you so afraid of? Are you truly hurting or protecting them? Why are you chosen to treat me, the mother of your child, like trash? As though no one loved or cared for her, she deserved better. 
People that know her and don't know her prove their love and care about her by continuing to search for her daily. You won't even search for your own wife. You nor allow your daughters to participate in the searches. What does that say about you? Suspicious, that's what it says. You have had no rights to discard of her like trash, unloved, unworthy, as she rots away. You owe it to yourself, the kids, May's family, the public, to say where May is, so that she can have a decent burial. She deserves it. You will remain unworthy, no respect, no honour, until you reveal where she is. You will never be free until you te- tell us where May is located. Tell where May is and accept a plea bargain. You are a condemned man. Your soul is condemned. Only God can restore you by asking you for forgiveness. The court can give, offer you a plea bargain. Your co-workers have zero, no compassion for you. Your character at work is tarnished forever. You have tarnished your community and Solana Beach residents. Solana Beach residents are not pleased that you tainted their city by stating you drove your son to their city. They are not pleased. What do your parents think of you and the dishonour you have brought upon your family name? I hope they are not part of May's disappearance and are not encouraging you to tell the truth. The Millet family name is tarnished by you. There is no honour in the family name. Restore honour to the family. You have no right to be called a dad. If again I say to you, truly love those kids, maybe you don't or ever have loved them. Maybe you don't or have never loved them. Tell the truth. Do your plea bargaining so families can begin to heal, reveal where May is and bring closure to everyone. These are some of the safety certificates that he also exhibited this is exhibit 14 the california department of justice handgun safety certificate exhibit 15 the fine firearms san diego county largest gun store certificate exhibit 16 firearms safety certificate registered until 2026 Exhibit 17, 10 years service award from March the 28th, 2015, presented with pleasure to Larry Millette in grateful recognition and appreciation of your faithful and valued service to the Department of the Navy and Government of the United States. He's handed all these in as evidence in order to try and get his guns license back. The Star Performer Certificate of Appreciation presented to Larry Millett Naval Medical Centre in recognition of outstanding work as safety representative, Rotometry Department of Fiscal Year 2014. Naval Medical Centre San Diego, Larry Millett Certificate for Outstanding Performance in recognition of your outstanding contributions for safety. the commanding officers cup letters of appreciation from the department the navy this was a research referral that was received on the 2nd of the 3rd 2021 and the referral was for child welfare services alleging abuse or neglect of the children. After conducting an investigation, they concluded that this referral may be closed due to the fact that they felt the children were safe. And it is a character witness letter. The le- this letter is written. This letter is written letter of character for Larry Millette. I have known him since 2021. Starting from our days of active duty while serving at hospital corpsmanship, corpsman at the Naval Medical Centre San Diego, I have known Larry to be of good morals, behaviour and attitude that exemplified the trademark of the outstanding sailor. I can remember Larry being recognised for such attributes and it goes on. 